when Jason is being instructed by Freddy and in what to do, Freddy posing as Jason's mother, Jason does a bit of a head tilt, almost as if to say, is this seriously the plot we're going with here? Okay. So, Jason is afraid of water. He swam in Jason Takes Manhattan, you know. Oh, but it's only in his subconscious he's afraid of water, which is why he doesn't mind the water off the end of the pier near the end. So, in his subconscious he's afraid of something, and in real life, that doesn't make a lick of sense. Okay, your subconscious controls how you see the world. If you see something in the real world that you're afraid of in your subconscious, you're gonna be afraid of it. Isn't it interesting how when the teens drive away from Springwood to Crystal Lake, they don't hit any of those 24-hour roadblocks that the sheriff set up just a couple of scenes earlier. I get why Jason remains asleep, sedated. It's because the teens are continually sedating him. Why doesn't Freddy think of that? He doesn't seem to consider the fact that Jason could wake up. He takes forever in tormenting Jason. Doesn't he realize that as soon as Jason wakes up, he's not going to have this direct access? He's going to have to take over someone else again? You know, sedate him again? Yeah. And why does he take quite that long? Anyway, he's been known to be able to kill really fast. It's, it is nice that in this they do go back to that he can kill you in your sleep once he has enough power at least I think I guess because a lot of the sequels to A Nightmare on Elm Street actually kind of didn't let him just kill in the dreams you know in the first one he does but then in a lot of the sequels he has to move you to a certain place or yeah I liked that sometimes it goes into a dream without you realizing until it gets really extreme and then Lori wakes up. It's basically just her who does the dreaming. Was the whole thing with her father possibly having killed her mother maybe a bit out of place and unnecessary? I mean, we get the revelation in a dream that it wasn't her father, you know, and don't just love how Jason Ritter just accepts that. No, I saw in my dream that it, it was Freddy, it wasn't my father. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. I get that they were trying to create some tension around the fact that, you know, she was going back to her father and he wanted her to go to sleep. Why? I mean, that makes sense if you think that he is going to hurt her in her sleep, but if not, then why exactly does he want her to sleep? I mean, we don't see him... I mean, maybe he's, you know, got, like, hypnocin on that juice, but still, he seems intent on getting her to sleep with or without Hypnosil, isn't that kind of feeding her to the fox or something? It, yeah. I personally really didn't care for the pinball thing in the featurettes. They talk about how it was originally going to be more brutal and then they made it fun. You know, they went for... with the sound and the whole thing I mean, Robert England does great with it as usual, but it just seemed a bit too silly compared to how dark and brutal the tone was in the rest of their fighting.
Jason being on fire when he attacks the rave is a pretty good image, and you know, he burns his way through the cornfield. It's good with the sexual attack by Freddy on Lori in her dream, very reminiscent of proper Freddy Krueger. You know, there's that kind of, he gets you where you're most vulnerable, and there's a, a predator kind of quality to him. When Kia talks about Freddy and how he's like overcompensating, she kind of messes it up because she's talking about how Freddy has the small ones and then Jason has the big one. If she was talking about, you know, we know what she was talking about, then wouldn't it make more sense to say that Jason was overcompensating for something rather than the dude who has, you know, a couple of small knives? Yeah. Laurie is kind of an idiot when she does the whole gasoline pouring thing, because what she does is she pours a couple of feet in front of her, and then she walks forward, gradually building it towards them. They're busy fighting each other. She could walk closer and walk backwards as she's spreading the gasoline. If the gasoline catches fire while she's standing in it, she's going to be burnt too. I say part of the problem with the concept and the setup here is that Jason never really had any clear-cut motives before. I mean, okay, you can maybe say he's avenging his drowning, if you're going with that continuity and that canon. He's definitely avenging his mother's death at the hands of camp counselors. But other than that, I mean, near the end of that franchise, he was just killing everyone he came into contact with, you know unless they had special lead character of the film in vulnerability, of course. I don't think that the lower shutter speed, you know, when it... you'll know it by the image kind of lagging, really worked well for this. I mean, thankfully, they didn't use it all that much, but it really didn't look that good, in my opinion, when they used it. And that is it for Attack of the Sequels on Freddy vs. Jason. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.